We like Fridays around here. Fridays are good days because we use the uh, Gregorian calendar here at the NCW Live channel. And that means Fridays are followed by Saturdays and Sundays. And you put those two together and you got themselves what they call them the weekends. That's a great idea. I mean, think about it. What if it was like um, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Tuesday? Nobody would want that. So they put Saturday and Sunday together. Good thinking. It's the third day of December 2021. I am Dan Koontz. Jam-packed five-star show for you today. A lot of news to get to. Significant change in the weather. Big-time change coming. Even you could wake up Monday morning here in a little old Winnetachi town, USA, with a little bit of light snow, which is a far cry from the 70 degrees that we got to earlier in the week. In fact, we set another record high temperature yesterday. We tied it. We actually officially at Payborn got to 58 degrees on Thursday, and that happened at 1230 in the morning. And then it got cooler. It never got warmer than 58, but that 58 degree that we hit yesterday tied the record of 58 degrees set back in 1975. So we've set a lot of high temperature records over the last three and a half, four weeks. That's gonna change. Forecast details are coming up. Take you up to the mountain passes, let you know what's going on there. Pretty quiet, but things are gonna get quite active in the Cascades this weekend as well. So heads up there, news, yep, sports, yep, yep. Uh, and everything else you need to start your Friday. And uh, the NCW Community Toy Drive, presented by our friends at Les Schwab, is well underway. Thanks for everybody for participating. It's going to be bigger and better than ever before because we're branching out to other communities and locations throughout North Central Washington to participate in the toy drive. And uh, every year they take a, what's the word to use for it? A special sh shopper, an expert shopper, I guess is the best way to put it. And you're going to meet 11-year-old Cohen Peterson, who went on a $1,500 shopping spree. Uh, hooked on toys earlier in the week with our good friend Brent Rhodes from Country 1047 KKRV. We're going to have that for you in the back half of the hour. If that doesn't put you in the Christmas spirit, nothing will. It's cool. It's 34 degrees outside of our studios, which is where we should be for this early December. Let's go ahead and see what we have out there for you. Fairly clear skies, which is why we cool down quite a bit as we take a look at the cross camera. Uh, looking out over the Wenatchee Valley, it panned a little bit more towards Wenatchee proper on this uh, Friday. Again, pretty, pretty quiet, all things considered, from Mother Nature's perspective for most of this week, or into the weekend, I should say. Monday, Monday morning, Sunday night into Monday mornings when things get a little interesting. Wait till you see some of the forecast slides we're going to throw your way, courtesy of the National Weather Service. Good morning to the Wenatchee Valley from that spectacular view right next to the cross. Where are we off to? I don't know. Uriah gets to decide. Uh, we're pointing to the sunrise, which isn't here yet. I want to say that's Steins. That is Steins. Good morning, Kashmir. You can see the sun just starting to get the job done uh, over the East Wenatchee bench. Sunrise this morning will officially be at 7.30 straight down. Sunset 411, eight hours and 41 minutes of daylight. Probably this is indicative of how odd our weather has been. Yesterday's low was 39 degrees. Our normal high is 37. Yeah, still trying to wrap my head around this weather. Camera three, another view of sunrise at, oh boy, Waterville? Yeah, oh, that's Rude Canyon. Up, up Rude Canyon we go, there's a car. Hello car, wave to me, or it could be a truck for all I know. That is, I believe, Waterville that you see uh, in the left-hand side of your screen up on the plateau with a few high clouds up Waterville Way. Good morning to our friends of Douglas Can County. Good to see you. Camera four. Lake Wenatchee takes a bow, and I'm pretty sure that's not snow. I'm pretty sure that's frost at the Cater Glen Golf and Ski Resorts. Uh, look at that. All the snow has all been gone. Uh, dirty face. Of course, there was so much snow melt that Mission Ridge uh, is not going to be operating at all this weekend. They have circled December 9th as their next opening date, but they're going to have some good weather. They're going to have not only going to have some snowfall uh, a little bit over the weekend and then quite a bit in the early part of next week up Mission Ridge Way, but the conditions will be such that they can make snow as well. So good news from our friends at the Mission Ridge Ski and Board Resort and good morning to Lake Wenatchee from our Nanapoc camera courtesy of SkyFi. All right. Five minutes after the hour, the weekend weather, not a lot to talk about, really. Temperatures are going to be back to where they should be, although it's still going to be a little bit warmer today 
and tomorrow. It's really going to be into the Sunday night and Monday when temperatures really return back to normal. We're still going to be above normal, but just not unseasonably warm. Going to see some clouds, maybe a little bit of light rain, uh, light snow in some locations. The Cascades going to get a pretty good dose of snow, though, and a little windy at times on Saturday afternoon for you for folks out in the Columbia Basin. Now, snow on Monday? <clears throat> Think so, yeah. The farther east you go, the better chance of snow you get, but we are going to get maybe a half an inch of snow overnight Sunday into Monday. Overnight Sunday into Monday. You get up Monday and we can see some light snow. We're talking about a half an inch of snow overnight Sunday while you're sleeping. And then when you get up and going on Monday to start your week, maybe an additional half an inch of snow. It's hard to believe. We go from 70 degrees, the warmest ever day ever recorded in December. We did that, of course, uh, on the first day of December, just a couple of days ago, 70 degrees to snow on Sunday night in the Monday. Not a lot of snow. It may dissipate rather rapidly, but still snow. It's a possibility. All right, without any further ado from the National Weather Service, here we go. Lots of clouds today, light rain, sprinklies, nothing really big coming down. 44. Our forecast high, again, our normal high this time of the year is 37 degrees. Uh, 31 for the overnight low tonight, pretty dry. Saturday, maybe a little bit of light snow that's not going to last long at all very early on Saturday morning. If you sleep in Saturday morning, you're going to miss it altogether. Outside of that, partly cloudy, a little breezy, and we'll top off <clears throat> in the mid-40s. Things get chilly now. Look at that. 26 for the overnight low on Saturday. Sunday, pretty quiet. We'll have more sun than clouds on Sunday. No real precipitation till we get very late in the day, probably after sunset Sunday night, 39 for the afternoon high. Snow, light snow Sunday into early Monday morning. Again, maybe about a half an inch here in the Wenatchee Valley. Few locations, a little bit more. The farther east you go, the better chance of accumulated snow. And certainly the Waterville Plateau, Leavenworth Plain, you could get certainly more snow as you normally do than the valley would get. And then we go back down to normal temperatures, kind of unsettled weather, hit and miss showers, but probably no real snow for the Wenatchee Valley on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Your past report, courtesy of our friends at DA Davidson, the strength of a trusted partner and personalized solutions to meet your financial needs. Member SIPC. Buckle up and turn on the headlights and go. You're fine. That's a live shot of Stevens Pass. No advisories, no restrictions. Roadway is pretty much bare and wet. Bare and dry right now on Blewett Pass. Again, no advisories, uh, no restrictions. Uh, pretty quiet, very light traffic on US 97. I-90, no advisories, no restrictions, no snow, no nothing. On Suquamity Pass, you are good to go. All the major mountain passes are gonna be fine today. No snow at all during the course of the day today. But here's your forecast for the mountain passes, and this is important. Uh, as far as past snow tonight, <coughs> excuse me, two to four inches. Two to four inches possible tonight. On Saturday, an additional three to five inches. It tapers off Saturday night. No snow in the forecast throughout the course of the day on Sunday, but uh, about sunset Sunday night, more snow. In fact, significant snow on Sunday night, anywhere from five to nine inches of snow possible Sunday night uh, on Blewett, and, I mean on uh, Stoquamity and on Stevens, and on Monday, an additional three to five inches of snow. So by Monday night, 13 to 20 inches of snow is in the forecast for the mountain passes, 13 to 14 inches of snow perhaps on I-90, upwards of 20 inches of snow on US-2 Stevens Pass. Again, no snow in the forecast today. It's not till tonight when the snow is scheduled to come down. So snow tonight, snow Saturday. You catch a break Saturday night and most of Sunday before it starts snowing again on Sunday night. Right now, no advisories, no restrictions, all right? The uh, past report and the weather forecast is in the books. We take a break and come back with your Friday morning news. And there's a lot of it, too, an adult portion, but we don't check identification. You're watching Wake Up in H.E. Valley on the NCW Life Channel. Now at Boswell's, give $50 or more to charity and receive $400 off stressless Mayfair recliners and office chairs, $200 off any stressless recliner and office chair, and $200 off each stressless sofa seat. Don't wait. It's time for stressless. Donate and save at Boswell's, 2915 Easy Street in Wenatchee. Hi, 
Highlander Grill and Golf Course is known as one of the finest wedding venues in the Wenatchee area. You do not have to be a member to come to Highlander. Highlander Golf Course offers a first-class backdrop for your wedding day. Our friendly professional staff will ensure your wedding and reception is picture perfect, from every moment leading up to the I do's to when the lights go down at the end of your reception. Hi, I'm Shalane, Site Coordinator for Highlander Grill. Give me a call to schedule your event today. Mary Maids of Wenatchee believes a clean home is a happy home. Mary Maids provides holiday cleaning services to cheer about. Don't let the seasonal cleaning ruin the festive fun. Mary Maids can simplify your life at a great value. It's never too soon to start planning a holiday perfect home. Mary Maids of Wenatchee happily offers a worry-free guarantee. Locally owned and operated, let Mary Maids do the cleaning while you focus on your family and friends. Call Mary Maids today. Kids are resilient. I just love their energy. They bounce back so quickly. I love the stories they tell. I love just their charisma, their character. Um, I love to see that subtle smile that you pull out of a kid, you know, when you, you start talking with them about something they really like. I just love what I do, and I can't imagine I would be as happy doing anything else. Are you looking at buying your first home or additional homes, perhaps an investment property or refinancing? Let the local caliber home loan experts help guide you every step of the way with two convenient locations to serve you in Wenatchee and Chelan. Give us a call today. News, weather, and sports. It's all here weekdays at 5, 6, and 10 on your local news source, the NCW Life Channel. Just a few high clouds floating around out there, 34 degrees here in the Wenatchee Valley. Can't rule out some light sprinkles. We'll be in the lower 40s today. Pretty quiet, all things considered, on a Saturday and Sunday. Light snow, possibly an accumulation of a half an inch or so here in the Wenatchee Valley it is distinctly possible by early Monday morning. We begin with uh, this story. A Colville tribal member has been sentenced to almost nine years in federal custody for a car theft and armed robbery committed last year on the Colville Reservation. 30-year-old Kyle Stephen Scott Cade was sentenced in Spokane Federal Court to 107 months in prison. He pleaded guilty, Cade did, to carjacking and possessing a firearm with a felony record. Back in April of 2020, he confronted a fellow tribal member at a house in Cooley Dam, threatened him with a handgun, and made off with a man's car. He led tribal police on a 23-mile chase until the car's motor eventually gave out. Cade has previous convictions in Okanagan County for second-degree robbery. In separate investigations, police found four stolen, four stolen handguns in Cade's home back in August of 2018. A Grant County man who pled guilty to three counts of child molestation will not have his sentence reduced. 78-year-old Craig Russell Jungers of Moses Lake he admitted last year to sexually abusing a child between the ages of seven and nine and earned a sentence of nine years to life in prison. Now, in his appeal, Junger said his attorneys failed to win him time to prepare his plea and he should have been allowed a sentence of rehabilitative treatment rather than prison. Well, the state court of appeals turned down his claims in September and then they reaffirmed his sentence in a decision that was handed down yesterday. Jurgens is serving an indeterminate sentence. That means after nine years, he has to be approved by a board before he can be released. Even though the official Christmas tree lighting ceremonies in and around the Bavarian village of Leavenworth is not going to be happening this year, they're still expecting big crowds coming to Leavenworth this weekend. The Washington State Department of Transportation gave us a heads up yesterday to expect longer than normal travel times on Highway 2 from both the east and west sides. Of Leavenworth, the city's Village of Lights Winter Carnival festivities run through December, and they include, of course, more than half a million lights decorating Leavenworth. As you know, we've had unseasonably warm weather, and that means, well, Mission Ridge Ski and Board Resort had to cancel skiing for this weekend. The resort opened last Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, on its annual after Thanksgiving target date, but said yesterday they'll be closed this weekend. Mission Ridge said with temperatures forecast to drop back down to where they can hope to open the slopes 
on December 9th. Stevens Pass also announcing earlier this week that because of the warm weather, they will not be making their scheduled opening today. Grand County PUD General Manager and CEO Kevin Nort is going to take a junior role at the Public Utility District as he continues to fight cancer, prostate cancer specifically. Nort is 56 years old. He's been under treatment for <clears throat> prostate cancer since June of 2020, and he says he, it's taken a toll on his ability to perform the job. So instead, he's going to take a junior role as chief resource officer, looking at ways to secure the district's power supply for the future. Chief Operating Officer Rich Wallen will become the general manager on an interim basis. The Grant County PUD Commission is expected to name a permanent replacement to take over next year. That 68-year-old woman who spent four nights trapped in her car in Blewett Pass, well, she was released from Central Washington Hospital on Wednesday. The family of Linnell McFarland of Spokane Valley says the sound of a nearby creek kept her calm and prayer kept her motivated during her ordeal. Her car was upside down and her arm broken with the bone exposed. Her family said on Wednesday her right hand will still need some surgery. McFarland went missing on November 18th. She was found on Monday, November 22nd. The family, by the way, has set up a GoFundMe page to help with the expenses they've incurred. And this morning I took a look and they got about $6,400 raised. Their goal is $30. Last month, the State Department of Health began to uh, draw a clearer picture, or try to anyway, of COVID-19 pandemic in our state, pulling down, uh, pulling information on the ethnicity of the various patients. They found that Latinos, Native Hawaiians, and Pacific Islanders had the highest rate of infections, hospitalizations, and deaths, despite totaling only 14% of the state's population. The state's deputy secretary for COVID response says those numbers appear to stem to the, from the fact that uh, those uh, ethnic groups have greater exposure to COVID because of the jobs that they do. We report this data by race, ethnicity, mm -hmm. and we see the gaps um, by race. And just you know, to be clear, it's very complex. The you know people. Um, have different types of exposures depending on their types of role in whatever the sector is. Um, but we do know that people of color um, are more likely to be frontline workers um, and that brings risk. And then also just to say explicitly, you know, that when we see these differences, it's, it is driven by systemic and structural racism, not by race and really want to call that out and name it. Um, and we, we issue these reports so we can figure out where we focus those community-based efforts and our efforts with you know, partners like the healthcare system. And we all have tremendous work to do in this regard. Something interesting happened uh, yesterday morning here at the NCAA Life Channel studios. Our content producer, Uriah Darby, was capturing some time-lapse photography from our cross camera. It was pointed uh, southeast towards uh, Rock Island, the Rock Island Dam, uh, just to get some some really cool time lapse of the sunrise and well somebody paid us a visit to take a look at this footage I was telling my coworkers in the bullpen yesterday, you know, that Santa just can't assume on Christmas Eve you can just, you know, fire up the old sleigh and it'll be ready to go, and the reindeer will be uh, up and ready to go. They, they, you know, you gotta, you gotta warm it up a little bit. You gotta, you gotta make sure everything's on the uh, on the up and up, so he's ready to go on the 24th. So good to see Chris Kringle in town. And speaking of Chris Kringle, he's gonna be right back here in the big city tomorrow at 12 noon. The place to be. Hooked on Toys at North Wenatchee Avenue. Santa is going to be arriving by helicopter. Yep, the, the Life Flight Network helicopter is going to drop Santa right on down to the parking lot. Again, this is tomorrow at noon at Hooked on Toys. Uh, Life Flight Ambulance will be there. They'll have uh, their big trailer dishing out coffee and coca and donuts and cookies. You like fire trucks? Yeah, I do. Douglas County Fire District 2 will be there with some fire trucks so the kids can check it out. They'll be collecting toys as well. So again, hop by uh, Hooked on Toys, you can pick up the toy, 
uh, for a needy kid and pop it in the box. It's all part of the NCW Community Toy Drive presented by our friends at Les Schwab. And you can meet the big guy himself. He'll be coming in via helicopter tomorrow at noon at Hooked on Toys. You're in the loop on this Friday morning, the third day of December. We'll be right back at it again tonight with the news with Grant and Eric at 5, 6, and 10. And with the preview, here's the man himself. Good morning, Dan. Coming up tonight on the NCW Life Evening News, we'll have more on the NCW Community Troy Toy Drive, which, as you mentioned, Dan, is now in full swing for its fifth year, and it made a stop at Hooked on Toys. We'll have more on that. Our weather pattern will change beginning today with cooler temperatures and possibly snow by late Sunday night. I'll have all the details in your complete North Central Washington weather forecast. And in sports, Eric Granstrom takes a look at tonight's FCS playoff game between Eastern and Montana. And we'll also preview this weekend's high school football championship games. That and all the day's news stories coming up tonight at 5, 6, and 10 on the NCW Life Evening News. We hope to see you then. Dan? Thanks, Grant. I haven't quite made up my mind yet on the beard. We'll see if he has it on Monday, I guess. We'd love to hear from you. You want to, you know, drop us a note and say hi. Got a news tip? The bottom of your screen is uh, all the ways you can do it. It's all, of course, associated with the World Wide Web. You can go to our homepage and click on the Contact Us icon. You can go to our Facebook page and use the Messenger app, or you can email us directly, news at ncwlife. Com. When we come back, sports, football, we're going to have that. Uh, we'll talk high school sports, both results and the schedule. Uh, we got hockey to talk about. We got a lot of sports. And it's one minute away. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Life Channel. You love to help others. You need a solid career. You can have it all with help from Charter College. Our 10-month medical assistant program prepares you to work in healthcare settings like physician offices, rehab centers, and clinics. You'll learn to take patient vitals, assist with exams, administer injections, and maintain medical records. When you're ready to launch a rewarding healthcare career, visit chartercollege.edu because we work to get you to work. The Culinary Apple in downtown Chelan is your specialty gift and gourmet cooking store. Find everything from homemade fudge to kitchen gadgets for your favorite chef. Your holiday shopping is a one-stop experience at the Culinary Apple. This Christmas, shipping and receiving is more important than ever. Cherry and Sherry are here to help. Mailbox at Chelan provides everything you need to get that special gift delivered for the holidays. Given this year's challenges, you must ship early. Visit Mailbox at Chelan today. All right, sports at 23 minutes after the hour. It's been nearly a week since the Cougars announced that uh, D Jake Dickert will be promoted from the interim head coach to the actual head coach. But they didn't make the actual presentation in Pullman until, well, yesterday. Here's Athletic Director Pat Chun. Coach Dickert has proven to be a servant leader and unifier. He's a, he has a powerful and vibrant vision for WSU football. He's a dynamic coach. He's con committed to the total development of our student-athletes. He's committed to recruiting uh, the best future student athletes to WSU. He shares the same values of Washington State University, puts the welfare and needs of the team at the forefront of all of, his, all of his decisions. He's a good person, and most importantly, he's a great husband and father. Thank you, Candace, Riley, Jason, Jett, for sharing him with us. Ultimately, over the last six weeks, he proved he's a Coug. So it's my privilege to formally announce Jake Dickert as the 34th head football coach of Washington State University. Take a picture real fast. Let's get in the middle. Dickert got a little emotional as he stepped up to the podium and said, uh, my task is to make Cougar football relevant again to the Pac-12. I'm extremely humbled and honored uh, to be the 34th uh, head coach of, of Washington State football. Um, I'm, I'm extremely honored to carry on the rich tradition of Washington State and carry on the passion of Coug fans everywhere. And more importantly, I'm even more excited to find a home for our family and a place in Pullman that fits us so well and that we can be here for a long time. My story begins in a small town in Wisconsin. 
Um, and I just want to encourage everybody out there, you know, to dream big, you know, because a long time ago I set out on this journey and there's no dream that's too big and there's nothing more that you can't accomplish, but you got to be willing to keep pushing through and outlast adversity. In a room full of fans, coaches, the band, and the football team itself, Dickert lined out his vision for the future of Cougar football. Our vision for Washington State football will be simple, okay? We're going to be building champions while we're relentlessly competing for championships, okay? And what I guarantee our young man is, first and foremost, we're going to build champion husbands, champion fathers, champion leaders of corporations and communities, okay? We're going to bring champions that want to support our other athletic programs. They want to be involved in our campus community. We're going to build champions that want to get involved in our Pullman community, want to be involved in youth sports and reading to every elementary school in this town. Uh, we're going to build champions of bringing people in to talk to them about social justice, be able to motivate them, and to give them opportunities of sports psychology and grow the whole person. Okay, we're going to have champions here at Washington State, and they're going to be champion people first and foremost. The second phase of it, while relentlessly uh, competing uh, for championships, is a 365-day approach okay, to greatness and to excellence and to being our best in everything that we do on and off the field. And that is a pursuit that I'm passionate about, and that is a pursuit to bring a Pac-12 championship back here to Pullman, Washington. Of course, the Cougars are going bowling this holiday season. Where? We don't know yet. We'll find out on Sunday afternoon. Rock'em Sock'em Football Wars, the state high school football championships will all be decided tomorrow. On the west side of the state, Elmira Cooley Heartline Crosby Stills Nash and Young will take on Quilcene for the 1B championship. That'll be in Tacoma at noon. That's followed by Graham Kapowson against Lake Stevens for the 4A championship. Royal will take on Eatonville in Lakewood at noon for the 1A championship. Kalama and Napavine will play for the 2B title following that game at 4 o'clock. The third site, Sparks Stadium in Puyallup. Bellevue takes on Kennewick for the 3A title at noon. That'll be followed by the 2A championship between Tumwater and Linden. All right, to the Les Schwab scoreboard from prep basketball last night. Boys, they get to go first. Tenasket topped Cascade 73 to 53. Liberty Bell beat Omak 44 to 40. Afreda edged Cashmere 67 to 55. Manson over Bridgeport 74 to 53. Girls basketball last night. Tenasket won by 40 over Cascade. Omak bounced Liberty Bell 49 to 36. Cashmere won by 35 over Afreda, Manson topped Bridgeport 52-34, and, Cas uh, and Cascade Christian beat Eastmont's C team 28-14. Coming up tonight in girls basketball, 1-H will host Shadle Park at 545. That's the same start time at Chelan at Eastmont. You got uh, 6 o'clock, we'll have Cascade at Natchez Valley, Bridgeport. I'm sorry, <coughs> I'm sorry, Brewster will host Kettle Falls. Soap Lake visits Bridgeport, and Libertyville will host Davenport. The late games tonight, Waterville, Mansfield at Antiat, and Moses Lake will host Chiawana. Here's a look at tomorrow's schedule. Wenatchee will play at Ridgeline, that brand new school out in the Spokane Valley at 3.30. Manson will visit Soap Lake at 4.30. Moses Lake tips off at Ferris at 5, while Luke will host Quincy at 6. And Cashmere will play at Zilla. The boys slate tonight. Moses Lake is at Chiawana at 7. The rest of the games at 7.30 have Wenatchee hosting Shadle Park. Chelan's at Eastmont. Cascade travels to Natchez Valley. Brewster will host Kettle Falls. Soap Lake is at Bridgeport. NEL will host uh, Waterville, Mansfield, and Davenport will be at Liberty Bell. On Saturday, boys' schedule, Riverside Christian is at Waterville Mansfield. They'll tip it off at 4. Ridgeline will host Wenatchee at 5. Moses Lake travels to Post Falls, Idaho at 545. Manson visits Soap Lake at 6. At 730, you got Quincy and Waluke in Waluke and Cashmere at Zilla. The wrestling season gets underway tomorrow, really, uh, with a lot of tournaments. Wenatchee and Moses Lake will be in Kennewick, Eastmont, Efreda, and another contingent from Moses Lake will be at the Davis Invitational. And the small schools from the region will gather at OMAC tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Scoreboard from our friends at Les Schwab. Eastern Washington came up short in men's basketball to Southern Utah, 89-76. Uh, to 76. Steel Venters. I like that name. Uh, it sounds like a race car driver. Anyway, he led the Eagles with 29 points. On the men's college basketball schedule, Tomorrow, Eastern plays at Omaha at 10 in the morning. Third-ranked Gonzaga will host 16th-ranked Alabama at Climate Pledge Arena in Seattle at 5 o'clock on ESPN2. Washington State will host 23rd USC tomorrow at 3 on the Pac-12 Network. Washington is scheduled to host UCLA on Sunday, but we'll see if that happens. They got COVID in the Husky men's basketball program. To the Les Schwab women's college basketball scoreboard, Washington State beat San Francisco 
72 to 58. Charlize Ledger Walker led the way with 27 points. Haley Van Lith, 10 points, four steals. Louisville uh, went on to win 70 to 48 over 12th ranked Michigan and Southern Utah down Eastern Washington in women's basketball, 60 to 46. The women's schedule: the Gonzaga women will host Wyoming tonight at six. Washington State plays at UC Davis Saturday at four on ESPN Plus. 10th ranked Louisville will host Belmont Sunday morning at nine on the ACC Network. Seattle Kraken back at home at the Climate Pledge Arena. Tonight, they'll host Edmonton at 7 o'clock on Route Sports Northwest. The Wenatchee Wild are in merit. The game will be played. They'll take on the Centennials and BCHL play at 7 o'clock tonight. They'll continue north of the border, taking on Penticton tomorrow at 6. The Seahawks will host the 49ers at Lumen Field on Sunday at 125. Seattle signed veteran running back Adrian Peterson this week. They're trying to bolster their backfield. Peterson will be wearing number 21, and he says he helps to boost the Seahawks running game. Yeah, I feel like it's a lot that I can add to the run game, you know, and um, inspire these young guys as well, you know, make those guys work harder when they see me out there, you know, pretty much going full speed doing a walkthrough 14 years in, you know, that made them kind of pick up their, their tempo a little more as well. Um, so, you know, I feel like I'll be able to add to the, to the running back room and, and uh, help get this running game going. Yeah, the running game needs to get going. The whole offense needs to get going. Who's kidding who? Russell Wilson, though, he remains optimistic. He says, I flat out refuse to focus on the negatives. I feel great. You know, I think at the end of the day, um, what, I'm, what I'm focused on is just playing the next play. You know, I'm not, that's, that stuff's gone, guys. That stuff's gone. It's, out, it's, out, it's already gone. We got to keep playing, you know. We got to keep making plays and finding ways to win games and, and everything else. So my, my focus is so hyper-focused on the next play, you know, the next moment, the next opportunity. If I was sitting there worried about the, the throw before or throw early in the game, you, know, you can't come back and can't try to win the game, you know, and that's, that's just part of the game. You got to have amnesia, you know. You got to be able to play the next play. In fact, I'm going to have amnesia on Sunday afternoon. I ain't watching. <laughs> it's the Seahawks and the Niners. 125 kickoff on the Columbia Broadcasting System. And those are just some of the games that people are playing on this third day of December, the obscure holiday. If your wallet feels a little lighter this time of the year, and well, it'll feel lighter this time of the year, here's a good idea. Make a gift. It's National Make a Gift Day. Today, instead of buying one, you make one. You can go out and get all the stuff that you need to make a gift and make a gift. A lot of people prefer it. That way, a lot of people, that's what they do. They, they apply their certain talent, whatever it is, and make homemade gifts instead of going out and buying one. So make a gift day is the holiday for you folks who would like to make gifts. I did a little research online, and since I read this on the Internet, <clears throat> you know it's true because you can't put anything on, on the World War Wide Web unless it's true. Now, this is uh, pretty interesting. I found this survey. 30% uh, of people say, yeah, they buy friends, and family members gifts, only 30%, which I thought was kind of low. And 30% of people also admitted that if they have a pet, they're buying their pet a gift. I guess I don't have any problem with that. Um, Midwesterners are more likely to make gifts than any other group of Americans. People in the Midwest are more apt to make gifts than any other place in this country. I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, Make a gift if you're if you have talented enough. If you don't have a DIY skill, you can acquire one, I suppose. Uh, and by the way, in China, for whatever this is worth, in China, gifts wrapped in red paper are considered good luck to the recipient. Didn't know that. Happy National Make a Gift Day today. It shows a little thought. It shows you put a little something into it instead of, you know, here's a quart of motor oil. That doesn't go too far. 34 minutes after the hour today in history. Happy birthday, Illinois, the land of Lincoln. That's their state flag. It's all right, I guess. Uh, Illinois became the 21st state in the Union on December 3rd, 1818, 203 years ago today. It used to be known as the Prairie State. They officially changed it to the land of Lincoln in the 1950s. Illinois was the first state to ratify the 13th Amendment to abolish slavery. That makes perfect sense, it's considering it's the land of Lincoln. Illinois generates more nuclear power than any state in the Union. Uh, Illinois is the largest producer of pumpkins, the second largest producer of corn, Illinois. 
Of course, the Chicago River in Chicago is one of the few in the world that actually flows backwards. Uh, they built a system of canals uh, about 100 years ago to reverse the flow. And so the sewage of, uh, Lake Sh of uh, the Chicago River flows into the Mississippi River instead of Lake Michigan, which is not a bad idea. Presidents Lincoln, Grant, and Obama all lived in Illinois, but the only president of the United States to be born in Illinois was Ronald Reagan. There you go. Happy birthday to Illinois, celebrating their 203rd birthday today. December 3rd, 1950, 71 years ago today. Check a look at the box score. Throw that up there, Uriah. The Cleveland Browns defeat the Philadelphia Eagles 13 to seven, despite gaining only one first down and Cleveland did not attempt a single pass. Zero forward passes. This is the last NFL game to date in which a team did not pass. Not even once. They ran the ball, punted, or kicked a field goal on every play. They never once threw a pass. The Browns didn't. And they still won. 71 years ago today. <laughs> Phenomenal stuff. On a much uh, different note, this is the 42nd anniversary of the tragedy in Cincinnati. The Who, getting ready to play at the Riverfront Coliseum in Cincinnati, Ohio. It was festival seating. First come, first serve. It wasn't reserved tickets with your seat on the ticket. Festival seating. The crowds were lined up outside the doors of the Riverfront Coliseum. The Who came in to do their sound check to play to make sure everything was good with no one, anybody in there. And the people outside the Riverfront Coliseum heard the Who play. They thought the concert had started. It had not. The crush began against the doors, and eventually 11 people <clears throat> were either trampled to death or suffocated. Here is WEBN, Cincinnati, Ohio. Others were pleading also to open the doors, but the police inside were very tough and refused to listen. And at 7.54, we found the first bodies laying on the ground some 15 feet from the front doors. The bodies appear to have died of trauma. For anyone that fell to the ground, there was no way to get up. The crowd just walked over. There were some evidence of footprint-like uh, injuries. They all just started to push. It was just a one massive wave of pushing. There were multiple contusions. You could actually see the kids, they'd push and they'd kind of fall back and push again. I caught my breath. I pleaded with a young woman police officer to open the doors that there were people down out there. Any that might have fallen in the front were just trampled. The deaths were attributed to the asphyxiation. The crowd surged forward, people fell, they panicked, and 11 ended up dead. 11 dead, 26 injured. The show went on. The Who were not told of what had happened until after the show. In fact, almost everybody at the Riverfront Coliseum had no idea what had happened outside until the show was over on this date in 1979. Uh, December 3rd, 1999, 22 years ago today, that's the Mars Polar Lander that you see, it cost $165 million. Uh, the development of the spacecraft cost $110 million. Uh, it cost about $45 million to launch the Mars Polar Lander. Uh, the mission operations budget was about $10 million, so altogether about $165 million for the Mars Polar Lander to land on the surface of the Red Planet. It made it. It crashed right before it was supposed to enter the Mars atmosphere, uh, NASA lost track of it and they never got it back. The, uh, they don't really know what happened. The theory is, is that it just simply came down too fast and it just crashed. 165 million bucks gone. The Mars Polar Lander. You can't win them all. You gotta make, space exploration is a dangerous business. We all know that. Uh, and finally, December 3rd, 2017, speaking of massive fails, the Silver Dome, the late lamented Silver Dome in Pontiac, Michigan, longtime home of the Detroit Lions. They blew it up. Yeah, here it goes. Yeah, they're going to implode it. They took the roof off, of course, the Silver Dome. It had one of, those, uh, one of those inflatable roofs, and they demolished it. They blew it up, imploded it on this date, December 3rd, 2017. Here it goes. And it's going to... It's, here we go. The Silverdome implosion is 
is uh, still waiting here. <laughs> yeah, it, it didn't. It didn't fall down. A couple of days later, they tried it again, and this time, it worked. And now the place where the Silver Dome is located in Pontiac, Michigan is a great big parking lot for used cars. 40 minutes after the hour, birthdays, Ozzy Osbourne. Every time he celebrates a birthday, I lose $6 to a friend of mine. Gary, you get another six bucks. Ozzy Osbourne is 73 years old today. He was born John Michael Osbourne. Ozzy Osbourne is 73 today. Somebody should probably tell him. And happy birthday to Avram Papadopoulos. Avram Papadopoulos is my favorite member of the Greek national soccer team. Avram Papadopoulos, which is just a fun name to say, is 36 years old today. 41 minutes after the hour, Mike mcnaughty has got an opinion. He always does. Then you're going to meet Cohen Peterson. He's 11 years old. He is a, well, he's an expert shopper. And he and our good friend Brent Rhodes from Country 1047 KKRV did a little shopping spree a couple of days ago at Hooked on Toys. Our cameras were there. I want to show that to you when we come back. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Life channel. Hi, folks. Welcome to Save Mart. How can we help you today? Uh, we're looking for a recliner. Okay, right this way. I want that one. I would like that one. That's a great choice. And I want this one as well. Okay. And I definitely want this one. Ooh. You find it at Save Mart. Full service at a low, low price. Hey folks, Carrie from Blueberry Hills. A chill is in the air and it's a perfect time for some old fashioned comfort food like our amazing Eggs Benedict, chicken fried steak, French dips, soups made from scratch, or fruit pies fresh from the oven. The crowds might be gone, but we're still here for you folks. So bring an appetite and a friend to Blueberry Hills in Manson, where you pick, you sit, you eat, and you visit. Open Wednesday through Sunday from eight to three, wildaboutberries.com. When it comes to finding a memory care community, you want the very best. You want to know that your loved one is safe and receiving compassionate care in a loving environment. Fieldstone Memory Care is an innovative assisted living community designed for those with Alzheimer's, dementia, and Parkinson's disease. You'll find a community specifically designed to enrich residents' lives. The Fieldstone team is here to help you navigate the important decisions you face when a loved one has dementia or Alzheimer's. Welcome home to Fieldstone. The Clearwater Saloon and Casino is the perfect place to meet in East Wenatchee. The Old West theme takes you back in time with casino gambling and poker tables. And now you can play the best game on or off the table. Stop by and check out the new game room. All your favorite games and extended late night hours makes the Clearwater your best bet for a great time. And if time slips away having so much fun, stay the night next door at the Cedars Inn. It's all here nightly at the Clearwater Saloon and Casino in East Wenatchee. A trip into Manson's Wine Girl Wines is a trip back to simpler times and freewheeling fun. Enjoy the lake lifestyle with a glass of wine, beer, or cider. The new menu completes the experience. Great wine, great food, great place. Wine Girl Wines. Chelan Wireless is making the switch and so should you. The switch to T-Mobile that is. Now you can get the 5G experience America's talking about right here in downtown Chelan. Stop by and see why the switch is on to T-Mobile at Chelan Wireless.
911. What is the address of your emergency? Yes, it's me. It's my husband. I think he's had it. Is there something the matter with him? It was a feeling that I'll never forget, like being able to meet them and know that he survived. Okay, tell me what's happening. Is he conscious? No, he's not. He's okay. not. Okay, take a deep breath for me. I'm getting you help. River Calm means to me that I still have my husband here with me. They're the ones that guided me through saving his life. Dog Magnati and everybody is entitled to my opinion. Now, there's a lot of complaining lately about the public schools teaching th things like uh, what, the, what, the, what they're teaching, you know? People are up in arms about things like critical race theory and sex education. And, you know, my kids went to public school, and I'll tell you, I didn't care what they taught because my kids came home and they talked to me and Rosie about stuff. Now, I figured that it was our job as parents to establish a trusting relationship with our kids. So, they'd listen to us and trust our input when it came to forming their own values. Now, my relationship with my kids wasn't a greater influence on them than what they heard in school, then that was my fault. This is Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and that's my opinion. Saturday, December 4th, RLS Productions presents the West Coast Best Bon Jovi and Journey Tribute Bands at the Wenatchee Convention Center. Non Jovi will bring back the stadium rock of the 80s, and the Infinity Project celebrates Journey, one of rock and roll's greatest hit makers. Guests may enjoy an exquisite dinner before the concert or just the concert. Dinner and concert tickets are available at rlstickets.com. That's rlstickets.com. The Wenatchee Valley Senior Activity Center brings you Vibrant Motion, a new hour-long exercise program featuring local instructors Connie Townsend and Pat Robbins. Each week, we'll bring you a new episode with aerobics or Tai Chi. We promise you'll get a heart-pumping, low-impact workout regardless of your age. Join us for Vibrant Motion, weekdays on the NCW Life channel. Check your program guide for airtimes. Color Effects has moved their shop to a larger location to expand their services, including adding in a state-of-the-art large format printer. They got it. You need banners? They got them. You need vinyl decals for your cars, trucks, vans, or trailers in just about any size? Yeah, they got it. Color FX has also been providing fun swag and clothing for local churches and high schools around our valley for decades. Support your local print shop. Call Color FX in Kashmir today. DNL Army Surplus in Wenatchee is stocked with items for the whole family. From ammo to collectibles and so much more, DNL Army Surplus, your one stop shop for military surplus, survival, camping, and tactical gear. Bring the whole family and stop on by today. Now, am I looking into this camera? Or am I looking? Where am I looking? We're going to have you just look. The holiday season is coming, and Santa's making his 15 second commercial for NCW Life Channel. Are you? Ho, 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 ho. When the people you serve are your friends and family, you see the world a bit differently. You understand that your survival depends on the health and strength of your relationships. Your word is your reputation, and that doing the right thing is the only way of life that matters. At Confluence Health, we remain humble. Trust is a gift that is earned, a privilege, an honor. And we remain grateful for the trust you place in our hands. At D.A. Davidson in Wenatchee, they believe your investment success begins with a personalized plan. A plan that is the roadmap you need to navigate your way to living your best years in retirement. D.A. Davidson can help you create a plan so you can take the time to enjoy the finer things in life. Let the financial advisors at D.A. Davidson help chart your retirement future today. When your sweet tooth demands chocolate, Rocky Mountain Chocolate Factory in Leavenworth will satisfy your craving with house-made fudge and brittles, fresh dipped caramel and candy apples, and of course, delicious chocolate. Stop by Rocky Mountain Chocolate Factory in Leavenworth today. <laughs> now, am I looking into this camera? Or am I looking, where am I looking? We're gonna have you just look. The holiday season is coming, and Santa's making his 15 second commercial for NCW Life Channel. Are you? Ho, 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 ho. This is 
Cohen Peterson, and uh, he's going to be armed with $1,500 to go in and do some damage here and collect some toys for kids in our area that need it. So, Cohen, I know you've been training for a lot of years for this opportunity. What are you looking for when you go shopping today? I look for toys that all kids can play with, not, not just specific ages, all uh, genders as well, all boys, all girls can play with. I'm looking for um, art so they can also be creative with what they do. Lord. And um, it's just a great time to have smiles on children's faces. It's just a blessing. All right, so he knows what he's doing. I can't wait to see the shopping carts when we're all done. We're gonna head inside and get to spending some money. We got Chad here from Lushville. Say hi, Chad. Hi. All right, so where do you want to start? I want to start everywhere, but how about we go from the back and then come up to the front? Should we do that? Good plan. All right. This is something they can push their feet with and go zoom zoom. I like it. I think we could do some mega blocks for kids because they can always be creative and they can build whatever they want. They could build a huge tower, they could build a little bunker, they could do anything with this. They could even build a little house. Oh, yeah, we're doing this. So I've had a little experience with these. You can move the track around however you want. You can roll them downstairs, down hills. Uh, you could make whatever you want out of it. You can even like make your own little ramp and it'll go over that. So I think that will be good. Anything she, frozen is pretty good. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Alice's mouth and head move while she sings. So she sings, she, she makes sound, that music. That's pretty good. And then, we gotta get Anna. I mean, if what's you get else? One, you what's, have the other. Yeah, what's Elsa without Anna? <laughs> I mean, yeah. So, I'm gonna grab a cat. You actually probably would want to get some slime as well, you know. You're probably gonna get a stretch arm strong. Kinetic sand. Wow, that is heavy. So, colorful effects. Kinetic sand is something you can be creative with as well. Uh, everybody can play with it. So it sticks together in a shape? Yep. Sweet. And you can push it, mold it, and there's little different customizations. You can squeeze it down and it'll come a specific shape as well, like a square, circle, sphere. And it comes somewhere. with a handy carrying case. You gotta love that. Yep, we're definitely doing bowling. Yep, we're doing All bowling. Right. Yep. We're definitely doing bowling on there cement, you. tile, wood, whatever you want to do. This is the thing for jumbo bowling. Can we get that? Yeah. All right. Sure. Last one. Battlebots, the uh, remote controlled. You try and fight to win, and then they they repair easily. So they break apart and they repair easily. So we're gonna do that. So what do you think of your adventure today? I think it was very interesting, fun to have, and. I think it would be so nice to have um, the kids' faces when they see these toys that, I, um, that they got. I mean, I get super excited when I get presents as well, so I think they would have the same exact heart, 
heartwarming feeling as well. Well, it's been a great day here at the NCW Community Toy Drive presented by Les Schwab at Hooked on Toys. It's the first of our two kid shopper events with the expert shopper today was uh, Cohen Peterson. He did a fantastic job. In fact, behind me, you'll see some of the seven carts that he was able to fill with $1,500 thanks to you and your donations. Uh, we're going to be out here again at Hooked on Toys this Friday and Saturday. Saturday is a special event because Santa is going to be arriving via helicopter. So be sure and join us for that. It's all part of the Les Schwab Community Toy Drive uh, here at Hooked on Toys and throughout the community throughout the holiday season. Thanks for joining us here on the NCW Life Channel. I'm Eric Grandstrom. It's a hometown celebration Christmas in Kashmir, Saturday, December 4th from noon to 3. Come enjoy a warm beverage, holiday treats, indoor artisans, festive music, activities, DIY ornaments, and a photo with Santa. Thanks to our supporters. Kashmir Mailing House. They take care of all your mailing needs, big or small. Conveniently located in downtown Kashmir. One Hope Wines. Wines that give back to nonprofit causes. Call today. Come on, I'm a certified technician. I was trained to take good care of you. Nine, I've only been to the dealer. I've been coming here for years. These guys are great. Look around. The BMW, the Jag, the Volvo, they're all waiting for regular service. Well, the BMW has a little computer issue, but that's nothing we can't handle. Come on in. From regular maintenance to computer troubleshooting, trust the Global Car Care technicians with your import, diesel-powered, or domestic vehicle. Global Car Care, they speak your car's language. Danke schön. Now on Wenatchee Avenue, Value Plus Medical Supply, your one place for expert customer service. You'll find a large selection of lift chairs, scooters, power wheelchairs, and other medical supplies. Come see your local provider, Value Plus Medical Supply. Green Motion e-bikes have rolled out the new line of custom e-bikes. They have three-way adjustable folded e-bikes and full-size mountain e-bikes. Pedal assist on the throttle makes them a perfect fit for any rider Green Motion e-bikes in the Mills Brothers building. In a world afraid of technology, one man, one show will bring you the newest innovations that may just change your life. This summer, Ray McNeil and your weekly tech update is your weekly tech update with Ray McNeil. Hi, I'm Eric Grandstrom with the NCW Life Channel. And I'm Brent Rhodes with Country 104.7 KKRV. Well, Brent, it's that time of year again. It's the NCW Community Toy Drive presented by Les Schwab. Thanks to you, last year we provided toys to over 1,800 needy children in our area. But the need this year is even greater. So please drop off a new unwrapped toy at any one of our drop boxes throughout the region. To learn more about the toy drive and the organizations we support, head to lstoydrive.org. The NCW Community Toy Drive, presented by Les Schwab. All right, getting closer and closer to the weekend. Quite a bit of sunshine right now outside the Wenatchee Valley. <clears throat> That's right, 34 degrees. Uh, things are going to change once we get through the weekend. The weekend is going to be pretty quiet, maybe a couple of spittles of light snow. That's not going to stick around, and it'll dissipate pretty quick. Maybe a raindrop or two, but what we're really keeping a close eye on is early Monday morning here in the Wenatchee Valley. Sunday night into early Monday morning, we could get about a half an inch of uh, snow. Could be in for a bit of a dicey commute. Now, the, the chance of snow is greater the farther east you go. So, Ritzville, Spokane, that kind of area, they're going to get a little bit more snow than us here in the Wenatchee Valley. But I think everybody in our viewing area is certainly going to get a little bit of light snow in the wee small hours of the morning on Monday. Wanted to give you a quick heads up on that. And you can expect some snow in the mountain passes too, especially tonight and Saturday. But the real snow event on the mountain passes is going to be Sunday night into Monday. Wanted to give you a heads up on that. Right now the passes are fine, but uh, it could get a little dicey in the Cascades over the weekend. All right, from the National Weather Service, here we go. Mostly cloudy, maybe some light sprinkles off and on. Uh, we'll top off at about 45 degrees. Our normal high this time of the year is 37, so still mild. 31 for the overnight low tonight with a little bit of light rain possible. Saturday, maybe a little bit of light rain, maybe mixed with some light snow early Saturday morning. It'll melt off because we're going to see some sun breaks and a high of 45. Also, a tad on the windy side on uh, Saturday. The jet stream is dropping down here over the, over the Pacific Northwest, so it's a little out of alignment. 26 for the overnight low on Saturday. Again, we're going to jump ahead to Sunday night into Monday morning where we could see some light snow here in the Wenatchee Valley. That's it for us. Have a great weekend. We'll see you Monday. Bye-bye.